welcome back to a new school year and a new season of Lindsay Live. Today, we're talking about the gift that we, as educators, give to the world. That gift is our graduate, and we have three of them joining us later in the show to talk about how they have returned to Lindsay to give back and join our mission to transform education. These graduates are lifelong learners who passionately believe in Lindsay Unified's mission to empower and motivate for today and tomorrow. They are part of the next generation of learning facilitators who are committed to serving Lindsay learners. All three of them are graduates of Lindsay Unified's performance-based system and participants in the LUSD College and Credential Pipeline, which offers graduates of Lindsay schools and current classified staff an opportunity to pursue their education to teach and serve in Lindsay's learning communities. We have a mission to ensure that every Lindsay learner has access to the very best learning facilitator and leader every day. The Teacher in School Leader Grant is one of the tools that is helping us achieve that goal. The grant develops and supports the district's current learning facilitators and leaders through professional learning, coaching, and capacity building experiences. Every stakeholder in Lindsay strives to be a quality producer, and the quality product that we produce is our graduate, our gift to the world. In Lindsay, we believe in that product, so much so that we've created opportunities for our graduates to come back and become part of the team. We're confident in our graduates' ability to go into the community and become a caring, compassionate, contributing member of society. They're the type of people who we are both excited and proud to work alongside. We'll talk with three of those graduates who are now serving as learning facilitators here in Lindsay. But first, we have TSL Director Amalia Lopez on the line to talk about the vision behind the College and Credential Pipeline. Amalia, tell us what's so special about the Lindsay graduate and what makes you want to seek them out specifically for these opportunities. One of the reasons our pipeline is special is it's designed to capture the Lindsay graduate who through the performance-based system are designed to be lifelong learners, to have those civic, global, and relational competencies that we want to instill in all learners. So by bringing back our own graduates to serve our community, they are graduates of our model, of our personalized learning system, and of the competencies and lifelong learning skills we want for all of our learners. Last year was the first year TSL Pipeline graduates actually went into the learning environments as learning facilitators. What results did you see? What we've seen so far is that our graduates are the best new learning facilitators for our model. They understand the system, they were raised in the system, and they really have come back to serve the community and believe in the learners and the model. We've seen retention across all of our graduates through the pipeline that have come back to teach in Lindsay schools. And we've seen them instill that mindset of personalized learning and lifelong learning in all of the learners that they serve in their environments. What are you looking forward to this year and in the future? What I'm really looking forward to is the possibility of expanding the pipeline into a residency model. We know now that for learning facilitators to truly serve in our model, they need a totally different kind of instruction and pedagogy and credentialing experience. We would love to see more of our pipeline graduates return into our environments to teach, and we would love to see the opportunities exist for us to be their credentialing support and help them learn the instructional models before they enter our classrooms. Amalia Lopez, thank you for joining. Thanks for taking the time to be on the podcast today. Stick around. We have three Lindsay Learning Facilitators who are graduates of the College and Credential Pipeline in just a moment. Stay tuned. This is Lindsay Live. Welcome to Lindsay Live. Thank you for joining us. I have three Lindsay Learners turned learning facilitators here with me. Marissa Knutson, Wendy Valenzuela, and Lindsay Ibarra all Lindsay graduates who went through our TSL College and Career Pipeline. Ladies, thank you so much for taking the time to appear on the podcast today. Awesome. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having us. Marissa, I want to start with you. I have a quote from you that says, education is more than just English, math, science, and history. Education is opening doors to new opportunities and becoming a lifelong learner. What is a lifelong learner? What does that mean to you? You know, it's funny, Ian, that you bring up that quote for me. Just because as a learning facilitator, you know, we're always getting questions like, when are we actually going to use this? For example, let's say in math, I like to think of it as more of like exercising your brain and, you know, you're creating more problem solving skills that you can use in other aspects in your life. And so when you commit to being a lifelong learner, you start to have a better understanding of the world around you. 
ultimately that provides you with more opportunities to improve the quality of your life. Can you tell us about some of those opportunities that having this mindset has helped open up for you? The mindset of being a lifelong learner has actually created a lot of opportunities for me. For example, I started working for Lindsay Unified in 2015 as just an after-school program leader. So, you know, it's just a part-time job. And then eventually I decided, you know, I want to do more in education. And I applied to be an instructional aide in the reading lab. And I got to work with a lot of great reading specialists like Carrie Shropshire and Sandra Miller. And they just taught me so much about reading, so much about helping striving readers. And then I realized I want to do more. So I finished my education and I'm in the process of getting my credential. And that growth mindset and that lifelong learning of always wanting to learn and do more, it ultimately got me a position where I am now, which is in a learning environment as a learning facilitator. When I applied for the pipeline, it was actually a huge blessing to me. The pipeline brought opportunities like professional development. For example, Amalia Lopez did a resume and interview pipeline professional development, and she broke down our resume and told us like, you know, how to act in the interviews, how to dress for your interview and stuff like that. And without the pipeline, I wouldn't have known how to prepare myself to get my job. And Wendy, you've been a part of Lindsay Unified throughout our transformation to the performance-based system. What was that transition like for you and how has it prepared you for what you're doing today? I went through the transition as a learner when I was going into my freshman year or halfway through my freshman year, I believe. And my response to the performance space was similar to a lot of other people's like, what is this? This isn't helping. This this is confusing. So I didn't really understand it as a learner. And then after I got into my junior and my senior year, I started to see the opportunity they gave me as a learner of getting level fours, learning at my own pace. So when I became a teacher, I understood it a lot better. I saw how lifelong learning kind of went with it and how learners had to understand like how to continuously make mistakes and that it's okay and that they're not the same as people in their classroom. They're not the same as people in their classroom. What do you mean by that? Yes. So by that, I mean like we are not, I have 30 learners in my learning environment and they're, they understand that they're not going to learn at the same pace as the next person in their, in the chair or the computer during this time. And I teach them like, it's okay. It's okay that you do not learn like they do. You learn your own way, you use different strategies. And I think that's what Lindsay taught us that we need to provide several different options, several different opportunities, and just let learners run with it. Lindsay, talk about unique learning experiences. You were part of Washington Elementary's dual immersion program, which led to the opportunity to continue your learning experience in a foreign country. Tell us about that. Yeah, definitely. I started the dual immersion program when I was in kindergarten, actually, at Washington. And it went all the way through sixth grade and even into a little bit into middle school, so seventh and eighth grade. I learned Spanish every day, being a native English speaker. But since I learned from such a young age, by the time I finished middle school, I was completely fluent in Spanish and completely biliterate. So I wanted to keep pursuing that in high school. So I was able to take the AP Spanish courses because I had spent so much time learning Spanish and going through pieces of literature, learning about Spanish speaking countries. So even after high school, it kind of helped me decide that I wanted to study Spanish in college. So I actually have a degree in Spanish now. And since I spent so much time learning Spanish and learning about different cultures, it kind of inspired me to want to go to Spain for a while. So I ended up moving abroad to Spain for two years, working as an English teaching assistant in Spanish public schools. And that kind of helped me decide I really like working in schools. I like being around students. 
and kind of helped me solidify my career path and decide to want to become a teacher. Tell me what's great about having the opportunity to learn in a foreign country specifically, and would you recommend that career path to others who are offered an opportunity? Absolutely. Um, I think being exposed to all of the pieces of literature in Spanish and learning about different Spanish speaking countries kind of inspired me to want to travel and kind of see these places in real life. And I feel like learners going through the same programs right now can be inspired to want to do the same thing. Because to me, it was crazy when, when I got there that I was able to have friendships with people from different countries. So from like Ecuador or Uruguay or Mexico or Spain and just because I was able to speak the language and communicate with them. So I think the learners going through the programs here, the dual immersion programs, are should be inspired to kind of want to go to these other countries and build these relationships with people because knowing two languages kind of allows you to know more people and build relationships with more people because there's no barriers, no language barriers. And I just think that they should know that the world is theirs and they can go out and see it. As a matter of fact, all three of you were part of the dual immersion program as learners. What was it like adapting to what was at the time a very new and experimental learning culture in the performance-based system while also trying to learn a second language? I also started the dual immersion program um, when I was in kindergarten and I had actually just got here from a different country so I knew Spanish that was my first language I didn't know any English I mean my cousins tried to talk it with to speak it with me and it was minimal so when I started the dual immersion program it it helped me enhance my Spanish but it also gave me time to learn my English language and now that I've been actually a dual immersion teacher I see how much it's changed from then to now. And I still see the same benefits, how learners get to communicate with different people, if it comes to jobs, if it comes to going around the country, if it comes to college. I see it being a great program and I enjoyed it growing up. Do you feel like that helps you connect with learners in your own learning environment who might be going through something similar? Yes, definitely. Um, Learners in my environment, um, at my site, uh, I see them sometimes struggle making friends or I see them struggle reading and I get to relate like, oh, I remember when I had problems on reading directions or I had problems wanting to come out of my shell and communicate with teachers or even ask questions. So I tell them like, it's okay if you do not know certain words and I let their classmates know it's okay if people around you don't know the words um, and you just kind of support them because growing up, the support I had from staff and classmates um, helped me learn the English language a lot better. I want you guys to think about what being a Lindsay learner meant to you. What are some of the core values that you developed as a product of the PBS system that helped make you who you are? The class of 2014, which Wendy and I were a part of, uh, we were one of the first classes to go through the performance-based system, kindergarten, all the way until um, graduation. And it's re it was really nice because nobody ever gave up on you. Just like how Wendy was saying how, how she has learners and, you know, they have trouble learning and she tells them, you know, there, it's not just one way to learn. There's another way for you to learn. You just have to find that. And I think that growth mindset is something that Lindsay is instilling in every single one of their learners. And after you leave uh, Lindsay Unified, that is helping you so much just in the, in the world. If you go out and you're working a, a normal job now and you fail, some people will give up. But no, because you're a Lindsay learner, you know, that's a growth mindset, you know, that failing is a part of learning. So you just get back up and you go and you try a different way and you don't stop until you succeed. For me, being a Lindsay learner taught me that I can adapt to change because I was in a very experimental phase of the transition to performance-based. I had my first two years of high school be 
traditional A, B, C, D, a lot of just busy work. But my junior year of high school, they kind of hit us all with this, we're going to try this out. Like, we're going to make this big change and you're going to try it out and we're going to see how it goes. It kind of really taught me that no matter how big or how hard a change is, I can get through it and I can manage to adapt, which is true today. Right now we're in distance learning and I just have to keep reminding myself I got through that big transition along with a lot of other changes in my life. But right now, going from being a substitute teacher physically in the classroom before or even a teaching assistant abroad physically in the classroom, now being online is it is a big change for me. But being a Lindsay learner has taught me that I can adapt to this change. I do feel like Lindsay did prepare us um, on how to look for help, on how to be flexible. Like uh, Lindsay said, like we had to be flexible and learn so many ways on how we're going to deliver um, math sessions and what resources. And we shared them with throughout the district. We shared it with many teachers. So I definitely do feel like I see all our learning facilitators and our learners different from traditional um, elementary schools or high schools. We had more support. Um, even when I became a learning facilitator, I saw how much support you get as a learning facilitator. You walk in your site and you can go to many people if you need help. You've all been through this system as learners and it sounds like you've all gained a lot from the experience. You're all shining examples of what we want to see in our graduates, but now you're part of the team here at Lindsay Unified and we couldn't be more proud to be working with you. But now it's your turn to take what you've learned here and pass it along to build up the next generation of this Lindsay community. How are you taking the values that you've developed as a learner and applying them in your learning environment? How to have different resources, like I said, for my learners. When it comes to ELA or math, I want to make sure that I give them different ways to learn. I remember myself as a learner, I was frustrated that I couldn't learn the same way that the person next to me was learning. And when the uh, learning facilitator provided oh, you could do this way, this way, you could double check doing this. It just made me feel like, okay, I think I can do this. So making sure that my learners feel the same way is really important to me. Making sure that they understand what a lifelong learner is. Because um, growing up, we heard it, but it takes a lot of explanation and repeating it to them so they understand you're always going to be a lifelong learner. I show them that I'm still a lifelong learner. I need to take more. I continue to take more trainings. I continue to read more. I still make mistakes in front of them and it's okay. They teach me, I teach them. So that's what being a lifelong learner is. And I definitely believe that that's the goal that Lindsay wanted to, um, us to give back to our learners. Yeah, and um, piggybacking off of what Wendy said about you know taking risks and not being afraid to make mistakes, that's kind of what I would hope that if my learners take anything away from their time with me is that it's okay to make mistakes and that just to take risks, just to take a risk because it's like a quote from the office where, he, <laughs> where Michael Scott quotes that you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott. <laughs> and you know, so I just, I hope that they take, if they take anything away from their time with me that they take the growth mindset and risk taking and that making mistakes is, 100% okay because we're not perfect. I think for me, it's just kind of telling the learners that it's okay for them to not be perfect right now and to make mistakes and just still really emphasizing that growth mindset that Lindsay Unified really supports and instills in everyone here. And just kind of reminding the learners that they need to be flexible and they can do things that are hard and it's frustrating sometimes, but they are capable of doing it. Now, I know it's only the beginning of the year, but have you seen these values starting to manifest in your own learners? Have you seen these values being passed on? Definitely. Um, I was able to be in the class, the learning environment last year and I saw learners wanting to do more, not for me, not to show off, but for themselves. So when I would post charts of what grade they got or where they stand with iReady or any chart in general, 
they always wanted to do more. When it came to reading counts, they always wanted to read more books. They wanted to reach their goals. So I definitely saw my learners understanding what a growth mindset is, what being a lifelong learner is, and doing in the learning environment, but also at home, because now I get to see them work virtually and I see how they take it from their previous LF and how they're logging in, they're doing their work, they're making sure that they're being respectful. So yes, I do see them taking those values with them. And going off of that, I've seen a lot of learners kind of just be willing to share out any answer that they've written down or um, any conclusion that they came to and just being willing to share their thought process, even if it's not correct or if they missed a step or it's not the right answer. So just them willing to share out and take that risk and learn from it is is evident in the learning environment. They're able to fulfill that goal that they made for themselves. You can see how proud they are of themselves. They share with parents. And even if parents respond, you can see that they understand how important it is to their learner. They tell you that by telling you how thankful they are. So yes, I definitely have experienced this from learners, from parents, and it's great. I have one that I can share that just happened on Wednesday. So I was making use of Jamboards and for PE. So they were just gonna take a picture of the activity that they did for PE and upload it onto the Jamboard and share it with me. And one of my learners, he was emailing me. He's like, how do I take the picture with my Chromebook? And then, so I helped him take the picture with his Chromebook. And then he kept e emailing me, I can't do this. This is too hard. And then he finally, he sent me this email and he says, Mrs. Knudsen, I give up and I sent him an email and I said meet me on zoom right now I'm going to show you how to do this and so I showed him how to do it and I look at him and I said remember we never give up we just try a different way and then he just looks at me and he's smiling and he's shaking his head and he's like okay and for me I felt like I he, he got it he understood like okay never I'm not going to say I give up ever again that's awesome. Great stuff. It sounds like the learners here in Lindsay are in good hands with the three of you. And that being said, I want to leave you with one final question. And that is, what is your hope as a learning facilitator for the young learners and the future of the Lindsay community? I hope that they take with them that they can always reach out to any of their learning facilitators that they've ever had, even if it's, you know, their kindergarten, LF, when they're seniors in high school, they can always reach out to any one of them and we're always going to reply. We're always going to help them with whatever they need that they can count on every single one of the learning facilitators in Lindsay. And my hope is that they realize that they're allowed to be themselves. So if they learn at a slower pace or at a faster pace that they're allowed to do that. They're allowed to ask for help every five minutes if they need it or check in once a week if they have to. So they are allowed to go at their own pace and whatever works best for them is perfectly fine. And I hope that they see that they learned a different way and they hopefully want to do the same for their community, just like three of us did. We understood what they did for us and we wanted to do the same for our learners. So definitely to be able to, whatever profession they want to take on, but as long as they maybe want to give back to the community and the learners that will be here in the future. Marissa Knudsen, Wendy Valenzuela, and Lindsay Ibarra, thank you again for joining the podcast today. But more importantly, thank you for what the three of you are doing every day. Yes, thank, you. thank you for so having us. When Lindsay Unified began the transformation to a performance-based system over a decade ago, they too had a hope. Their hope was to give a gift to the world, the gift of a graduate who's a caring and compassionate human being, a lifelong learner who's a contributor to their community. The three of you are examples of that vision coming to life, and the learners here in Lindsay are fortunate to have you as learning facilitators. Thanks again for joining us, and thank you for listening to Lindsay Live. Follow us on SoundCloud, iTunes, and now on Spotify. We'll see you next time on Lindsay Live. Lindsay Live.